the burdens you have carried. Cause in this sanctuary. Something has to break. Something has to break. Something has to break. Something has to break over your life. Something definitely has to break. Something has to break. Something has to break. Over Nigeria, something has something has to break. Lift your hands and bless him. Give him praise. Tonight every burden is about to be lifted. Every chain, doesn't matter how long it is, is about to be broken. God is a God that lifts burden. Lift your voice and just bless him. Whatever looks like an oppression in your life is coming down under the influence of the power of God. Over this city, every siege of the enemy is about to be broken. Over the nation Nigeria, every bondage is about to be lifted. In Jesus name now we're going to pray shortly before we sit down but I want you to listen listen very carefully um, those of you that have followed our meetings every Sunday almost in every meetings there were in every meeting there were definite words of prophecy coming I remember I told you about an attack I saw and kidnapping in a school environment I think that was the second Sunday or the third Sunday or first Sunday. I told us by the Spirit of God that it may happen more than once as I'm seeing it that we should pray. And already in one month we have had two cases. I was just coming and I saw a long queue around many filling stations and I realized there is a faint fuel scarcity. Now we have to pray especially us in this town because what i'm seeing is beyond just an economic situation we are under siege okay please bring it down so that they can hear me we are under siege let me tell you the plan of the enemy the attack that happened on tuesday was a failed attack and every attack as far as terrorism is concerned on this city will be failed I'm telling you because God has his eyes on this city. So what do they want to do? I, I was reading on news and I saw that um, those who went to fix the light, their vehicle stepped on the landmine and was blown off. So what they want to do is, since they can't penetrate, they will make sure they do everything possible for life to become difficult for the people inside the city. So there is no light, now there is no fuel. And these are the two major sources of power. So what do you think will happen next? That's the reason why the Bible says we should watch and pray. These things don't just happen. They are not just happenstance. It's a plot. The enemy has an agenda. It's only the church that doesn't have one. But the reason why God has kept us in this city is so that the storms and the agenda of darkness can be weighed out. The Bible says, Ye shall decree a thing and it shall be established. I want us to lift up our voice and call upon God this afternoon and say, God, enough of the nonsense. Let every captivity, every siege of the enemy over this territory, over this city, over the nation Nigeria come to an end. Lift your voice and pray. How about we can pray better than that? It doesn't have to come to your door out before you pray. It doesn't have to come to your house before you pray. The Bible says he has kept us as watchmen to see evil and warn the people. 
And this is why he has given us authority so that whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we lose on earth is loose in heaven. We say no to terrorism. We say no to hardship. We say no to economic downturn. We say no to famine. We say no to pestilence. We say no to every form of banditry. Every agenda of darkness is broken now. It's broken now. Come on, raise your voice and pray. Abraço com close ele que paria taba Da para coso com poro de abahai E que poro coso toro mo cori abahai Come on pray come on pray Let the agenda of the enemy be restrained Let the flood of darkness be cut off Para cabo socorro com poder de barrar. Para branda para cabo se querer beber. Para cabo se acaba lá de. In Jesus name we pray. The Bible says, Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Attacks don't just happen. They are manifestations of agenda and plot that has been made over time. But we are going to declare and decree against the spirit of terrorism and banditry over the shores and the surface of Nigeria. Wherever it has come from. I know they have human sponsors. But the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 that there is a spirit that is called the prince of the power of the air that is at work in the children of disobedience. People don't just like to attack themselves. Don't you think it's sheer wickedness when somebody turns around to attack his own blood? And let me tell you something. I will keep saying as God reveals to me, but if we don't pray, if we don't pray, something terrible is about to happen <clears throat> i will not share this one i was was it um was it you sir i was talking with during the week welcome sir i, I was talking i think it was you when we we're driving or somebody i said god showed me i i saw a shortage of food stuff i saw an agricultural crisis coming on the nation it was earlier the week i think we we're driving and i think i told somebody just two days ago i saw it on the news that one association of whatever whatever it has to do with you know food stuff and all of that that they have gone on a, a, a 21 day strike and they are threatening the government than the presidency to meet their demands otherwise they will ensure that their union nationwide will not transport any food stuff god showed me that on on friday last week i forgot to say it on sunday and then we were discussing with it yesterday if we don't pray something terrible is about to happen but if we pray god will fish out the weapons of darkness and those that are part of this i told you last day i said i see death coming to certain people in power but whoever is a troubler of nigeria it's time for them to be laid to rest listen i know we are online I know we are online there are people following us from different parts of this nation and beyond let them hear it i said so anybody that has decided that there will be no peace in nigeria recently somebody told me that it, nigeria is ranked the third most dangerous country when when did it happen well let me tell you something it happens when the church sleep when all we do is just come hold our nice service and go and we don't care about society and what's happening around the bible says if the foundation be destroyed what shall the righteous do but every spirit of terrorism of banditry every onslaught of the enemy that is weathered against this nation is coming down lift your voice and confront that spirit in the name of jesus come on come on pneumatic pray I know us to be a people of prayer. We come against every demonic strong man, every principality hanging over the heavens, every power in the second heavens, raising an onslaught against this nation. 
Let the judgment of God come against them. Let the judgment of God come against them. Every traveler of Nigeria, where that man of spirit that has decided that there will be no peace in this nation. Oh God, arise and let your enemies be scattered. 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 As smoke is driven by the wind, so drive them away. And as wax melt before the fire, so let those that hate God perish at this side. In Jesus' name. The Bible says in Isaiah 60 verse 18, it says, Violence shall no longer be heard in your land, neither destruction and wastage at your borders. He said, but your gates shall be called praise, and your walls shall be called righteousness. I want us to lift our voice and prophesy over the six geopolitical zones of this nation. Prophesy peace to the north, peace to the south, peace to the east and the west, peace in the northeast, peace in this city. Prophesy peace in the federal capital territory. Peace in the southwest, peace in the south south, peace in the southeast, peace in the north central, peace in the northwest, peace in the northeast. We prophesy and we declare, let there be peace, peace in Nigeria, peace in government, peace in the economy, peace in society. In Jesus' name. Father, we declare and declare over this nation that the onslaught of the enemy has come to an end. Oh, I wish you can agree more with me. I said the onslaught of darkness has come to an end. Lord, we decree. Strings, please. That everyone that has decided to trouble this city, to trouble this territory, to trouble this nation, every human or spirit factor that is behind the economic downturn, insecurity, joblessness, and the various problems of this nation, Father, in the month of March, let your sword of judgment arise. Let the sword of the Lord's judgment arise. Arise and strike on every side. Cut off the adversary. Silence the avenger. In the name of Jesus. We declare and declare peace over this nation. We decree and declare that Nigeria is rising from the ashes. We decree and declare a turnaround in government. In the name of Jesus. We declare that our schools are safe. We declare that our streets are safe. We declare that our homes are safe. We declare and decree that it is well with the righteous. In Jesus' great name and the people of God say, Amen. Clap your hands together and take your seat. Hallelujah. I want you to believe every prayer we make here. Believe it enough to see its manifestations in a very short time. One of the grace that God has given to us in this house is the ability to peep into his agenda not just for ourselves but for the territory where we live in. Most of these things that God shows me 
I don't actually pray for them. It just comes. And I know that God has given us that grace so that we can undo the plan of the enemy and see to it that the purpose of God comes to pass. Amen. And I thank God because March will be a wonderful month for the people of God. Amen. Amen. How many of us have been blessed by the meeting so far? I was so blessed, especially by the um, the ministration of spirituality. And I think if if you listen carefully and saw everything that happened, it's enough for me not to preach again. Amen. They literally preached my message. Some of us are a victim of the things that we brought on ourselves. We are a victim of our own words. Let me tell you something. The Bible says that you shall not, you, you must not use the name of the Lord in vain. Is that true? Mm-hmm. And in Exodus chapter 3 verse 14, the Bible says his name is I am. Every time you say I am poor, I am broke, I am depressed, I am finished. You are making the name of the Lord in vain. Because his name is called I am. Did you catch that? Yeah. So it has gone beyond you now. Every time you, you make a negative confession with the word I am, you are, you are victimizing yourself by your words and you are using the name of the Lord in vain. That's the reason why you must declare positive words. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am the blessed of God. Ensure that you keep speaking. I told you at the beginning of this year, I said you must be a prophet over your life. Amen. Ensure that you don't allow the devil to bring destruction and calamity on your life by the use of your physical senses. Some of us are quick to declare what we perceive by our physical senses. And you must learn not to allow your five senses rule your life. Now this is prophetic because in, Gen- in, in Joshua chapter, is it chapter 10 or so, there were five kings that Joshua conquered. And when Joshua caught those five kings, he called the captains of his army. And he told them, he said, put your leg on the neck of these kings. He said, for so shall God do to your enemies. Now, those five kings are representative of our five senses. Your sight, your taste, your hearing, your feeling. Many of us have been ruled by what our feelings tell us. That's the reason why you don't see anything good. Every time a prophetic word comes to you, and you begin to perceive through your natural senses, what is already happening not knowing that that word that has come to you is capable of changing what has happened you have brought yourself under the dominion of your five senses and the bible says the flesh profited nothing it is the spirit that quickens amen so this year i beg you in god's name ensure that you live in a negativity free zone if you have friends who they only know how to speak evil or speak the wrong things i tell you this is the year where you should dissociate yourself from them Hmm? break up from that relationship or maybe you are cutting a lady or a guy who only knows how to say evil is always good as or she's always good at confessing the wrong thing if they don't change break that relationship did you hear what i said don't ask me whether it's God or not. Even if you saw the person in your dream. If they don't change that attitude, break up from there. Because that relationship, that marriage will scatter before it was brought together. Suddenly, because there's no money in your account, it begins to propel false confession from your mouth. No, sir. No, man. No. Some of us, are. If some of us, we, if only you can be patient a little bit to wait on God. The Bible says, weeping endures but for a night. However, joy is coming. Now, before that morning comes with its joy, some of us have already destroyed the morning by reason of our negative confessions. We give in to despair easily. But the Bible says, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen? And I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. This year be the prophet over your destiny
say what you want to see, not what you want, not what you see. For we walk by faith and not by sight, isn't it? And now let the weak say I am. Is that what you used to say? Let the poor say because of what the Lord has done for us he so whether things are working out well or not give thanks let the weak say I am strong you have to say it before you see it you don't wait to see it before you say it. It is what you say that you will see. It is your words that propel the manifestations that you see in your life. So if you are waiting to see them, how will it manifest? He told the Israelites in Numbers 14 verse 28, he says, As I hear you say, this is God talking to them, As I hear you say in my ears, so will I do. Many of you, the angels around your life have been dormant for a long time. Because the Bible says they excel in strength, giving heed to the voice of God's word. They are waiting for you to issue the word of God from your lips because you give voice to God's word. And the moment you begin to say what the word of God says, they, are, they go into action. But when you keep speaking negative things, you attract demons into your life. Amen? I tell you, I live in a positive zone. I live in a miracle contagious zone. There is no 24 hours that pass that I don't see miracles in my life. I'm telling you, I'm not playing. Even the day that there's no bank, money will enter my account. Not because I'm so fortunate, but because I have understood this power that God has given to us. Some of you are around families, around relationships, friends that have snared your life into catastrophe and calamity for many years because of their negative discussions and words avoid negative discussions any kind of discussion where they just come and sit down to talk about the nation's demise run from there amen run from there only be a party to people or places where the word of god is spoken only be a party to people or places where faith is upheld because that is the weapon by which this country will be saved hallelujah and i tell you the truth i see god changing your life in such a way that will marvel the people around you he says when the lord turned again the captivity of zion what happened we were like them that dream then our mouth was filled with laughter and our lips will joy. And then said the hidden among them, The Lord has done great things for them. He said, The Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. The Lord will be glorified in Jesus' name. Pastor Emma, you're welcome. God bless you, sir. Amen. Can we celebrate God for the servants of God? And it's good to see every one of us. God bless you and I trust we'll have a wonderful time. Amen. How many of us enjoyed last week? Sure? Alright. Well, this afternoon when I was praying, I asked the Lord to give me a surprise. I don't know about you. But today will be better than last week. Amen. Now, let me stop to say this before we go into the teaching today. Miracle service next week is going to be very, very special, very critical. I sense an anointing to handle financial issues in the month of March, the miracle service of the month of March. I thought you would celebrate God for that. I tell you. In my spirit, I already see many things that God will do. And I see a lot of yokes that God will break off families. So I crave your indulgence. Ensure that we are prepared for that Sunday. Ensure you invite your friends, people that you know desperately need 
the touch of God to break every yoke and every bondage around their life. And I trust that the Lord will glorify His name. In Jesus' name. And make sure you don't forget to come early so that you don't sit outside. But even if you sit outside, the anointing will still reach you. Say Amen. Alright, are we set tonight? Luke chapter 4 verse 4. Last week, um, the topic was the faith walk. The faith walk. And we saw a whole lot about what faith really is. I taught you that there were two types of faith. We saw certain truths, basic truths about faith and its operations. The last thing we looked at last week was that every believer's faith must be tested. Amen. And God allows the test of our faith in the midst of trials and circumstances. You know, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the fire, does it amaze you that when they were thrown into the fire, the people who threw them were killed instantly? And you're welcome back, sir. The people were killed instantly, but then they who were thrown, the only thing that was consumed were their bounds, their chains. Isn't it? Now, sometimes the reason why God allows this is not part of the message, but you need to catch this. The reason why God allows certain trials to come your way is because it is in the midst of the furnace, the fire of that trial, that certain hidden agenda, hidden bondage of the enemy is destroyed. Had they not got into that fire, they would have remained bound. Some deliverance is happening in the midst of trials. That's what I mean to say. Oh, you didn't catch it. Okay. Don't worry. As you reason, you will understand. So God will allow some trials to come to you because that is the only way by which he can break off certain things. You remember when Paul was at the island of Melita? The Bible says they had gathered sticks together to make a fire. And Paul didn't know there was a venomous snake in the, in the bond, bundle of firewood that he carried until he put it in the fire the bible says a snake came out so it was the fire that revealed that there was a snake certain trials that god takes some of us through is for certain yokes that the enemy has carefully hidden around your life to be broken and also some of you the reason why god takes you through some affliction is because it is in the midst of your affliction that others can find deliverance if paul and barnabas were not thrown into jail the prisoners would not have been freed. If Joseph was not thrown into prison, the butler would not have been released. Some of you are going through what you are going through now because it is captured within your experience to bring deliverance to those that that captivity has held for long. It looks like I'm in a strange old congregation. Where, where's the protocol that brought me? Let's look for Numatec. This I don't think this is Numatec. They are so quiet. Is it making sense what I'm saying? If you don't answer me again, they will drive me to where Numatec is. I think I came to the wrong place. That's the reason why when you keep praying for God to take you out of that situation, God will not answer you because you don't have an understanding around the wisdom that is behind why you were brought into it they asked jesus they said this man that was born blind was he his sin or his they were quick to judge you see and that's what the enemy uses with guilt against us some of you will go through stuff and the enemy will begin to bring false accusation bring guilt to you and tell you it is because you sin or you do this and do that and sometimes if you fall into the hands of a false prophet or if you fall into the hands of a prophet that is still learning and he didn't wait to learn very correctly how to see before he started ministry they will fish out a mistake you made in your past and tell you this is the reason why you are going through what you are going through meanwhile the bible says i will forgive your iniquities and your sins i will remember so is somebody getting delivered 
So such a prophet should go back and train well on how to see. Because the fact that God gives you insight into somebody's life does not mean that's what God is saying. Insight into an information is different from a prophetic word. What you are seeing is past tense, but the prophecy is what God is saying now. And I tell you the truth, God says you are justified. God says you are being glorified. God says your setup is a setback, is a, is a setup for your comeback. This is it. Your setback is a setup for your comeback. That's what I mean to say. So every time men say there is a casting down, what should you say? You know the meaning of that casting down may mean when you lose a job. It may be when there is a conspiracy against you in the office. There's a particular report you are supposed to submit and the report gets missing. And you will be penalized. That's the casting down there. The Bible says in the midst of that, say, exaltation has come. Some of you, God wants to promote you in your office. That's the reason why he allowed people to start talking of you. Because that talk will get to the people it's like a recommendation the enemy doesn't know so it will get to the people that should sit on your case and decide that you are promoted the bible says the butler forgot about joseph for two years then pharaoh had a dream let me prophesy for somebody the problem that will make you relevant in your sphere of influence in your environment where you stay in your country or in your city may that problem happen so that they will look for you yeah. i said the problem that will happen around you for for your relevance may that problem happen in march in the name of jesus yeah. amen please take your seat now luke chapter 4 verse 4 we know the story jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days and he was in a temptation with the devil Verse 4. Play. I'm, I'm, I'm listening. God bless you. But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. Read the last sentence together. One to go. But by every. But by every. Proverbs 18, verse 20 to 21. It says, A man's belly shall be satisfied by the fruit of his mouth. And then verse 21 says, Death and life lies where? In the power of the tongue. He says, And those that love it will eat of its fruits. In other words, the product of your words will become your expression, will become the definition for your existence. Isn't it? Isaiah 43 verse 26. Let's walk through some scriptures and then we'll begin. Isaiah 43 verse 26 Put me in remembrance This is God speaking To his beloved, to his people God says put me in remembrance If you want to understand how to put him in remembrance Then you will need to read Isaiah 45 verse 11 That says Ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the works of my hands, command ye me. Put me in remembrance. Let us contend together. State your case that you may be acquitted. Isaiah 44, verse 25 to 26. State your case that you may be acquitted. In other words, there is a, a, a vocalization, an expression of a confession you must make to God that will place a demand on his justice system to act on your behalf. It's all about words. Who frustrates the signs of the babblers and drives diviners mad? Who turns wise men backward and makes... It not, makes their knowledge foolishness. Verse 26, my point of emphasis. Who confirms the word of his servant and performs the counsel of his messengers? Who says to Jerusalem, you shall be inhabited. To the cities of Judah, you shall be built. 
and I will raise up her waste places. So God confirms the word of who? Of his servant. Psalms 31 verse 20 to 21. Last scripture and then we'll begin the journey. Look at this. He said, You shall hide them in the secret place of your presence from the plots of man. You shall keep them direct secretly in a pavilion. From what? From the strife of tongues. In other words, evil words spoken against you. God sees the power and the effect of those words. So God created a system of hiding his people from those words. Because words are spirit. Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are what? Spirits. Positive words attract positive spirits. Positive confession attracts the spirit of God. Attracts the angels of God. Negative confession attracts demons. As a matter of fact, negative confession gives the devil a precise blueprint for how he should attack you. Do you get what I said? That's why God saw the reason why he should create a system. The Bible says it is a pavilion that is secret. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. That's the interpretation. That's the other verse that falls in line with this. So the presence of God is a pavilion where God can hide you from evil words spoken against you. Some of those words may be evil confessions made about your life people look at you and see stuff and begin to express what they see they are releasing spirits and god must hide you from the penetration of those spirits into your space some of those words could be incantations enchantments does it amaze you that every practice of witchcraft occultism and sorcery is done through the me mechanism of words hello you know, say so they don't they know they hang charm again. Anybody you see carrying physical charm, that's baby witchcraft. That one you can spit on it and say in the name of Jesus and it won't work. Demonic technology has changed. They have understood, but you, can, you know Satan doesn't create anything. All he needs to do is peep into what God has done because he has run short of tricks. The Bible says that we should put on the armor of God so that we, we can withstand the wiles. The word wiles in the Greek is methods, methodia. That's what it means. Schemes. So Satan, having lived on earth for thousands of years, he has recycled all his tricks and he no longer has any new thing. Meanwhile, the Bible speaks of God. God says, I make all things new. So what he will do is peep into what God has done and see what he can borrow from there as a mechanism against the people of God. So there was a time where there was a revival globally that was called the faith movement. And that was where the emphasis on faith confessions were made. So what Satan has done is he has peeped into that revival borrowed the instrument that God used which were words and is using it in all kinds of witchcraft, magic, soothsaying, occultism against God's people. That's why somebody can be in the village and say something into the air and it will meet another person in London. I'm doing, I'm, I just want to disgrace the devil this night. That's why I'm saying what I'm saying. For your information, my topic tonight is the fight of faith in bracket war of words. The fight of faith, the war of words. All right, let's write. Number one. Words are the basis for creation. We need to understand what words really are before we begin to link it to faith. Words are the basis for creation. 
The Bible says in Genesis 1 verse 2 that the earth was without form and was void. Notice that in verse 1 the Bible says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Something happened to the earth God created in verse 1 and the statement of fact in verse 2 was that the earth was without form and was void. And the Bible says darkness was upon the face of the, of the deep. Then in verse 3 it says and God said let there be light. Now understand that God did not say what he was seeing. What God was seeing was a dark, formless, and a shapeless abyss, which was supposed to be the earth he had created initially. But because the system of creation was through the word of his mouth, all that God had to do was replay what he had done before Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. So 2 Corinthians 4 verse 6 tells us that God commanded light to shine out of darkness. He saw darkness, he commanded light. That means you can command your situation to produce a miracle. You understand that? You guys are so quiet. We have to look for new material. I don't think... Are we here? So we have the opportunity we share in this great privilege with God to be able to create our world around us by our words. So what you say goes into play and is very important in creating the circumstances around you. Everything happening around you is somehow related to something you said. Let me give you an instance. Don't laugh. But some of you like singing this song. Even if you slay me or seem to delay me, I will never let go. I will never let go. So the trial you are going through, you brought it on yourself. You were the one who said, God, if you, whatever you do, even if you slay me. Now, you have not even been slain. It's just that you don't have money for one week. So the bargain was, if you slay me. Now, there's no money for one week and you're already shaking. You know, there, there are some believers that can quarrel with God. Sir, they will not come to church for one week, for one month. They are quarreling God. They will not pray for one week. As though it affects God in any way. Let me tell you something. Anything that will make you lose your devotion and intimacy with God is a dangerous trap. Run from it. Do everything possible to ensure that you stay under because that's when you are exposed the most. You get offended with God and say... Then after one month, they realize that, well, God didn't change despite what you did. For everyone believer that is discouraged and decides not to praise God there arises a thousand more that night that you sat up and you were complaining somebody was praising God doing midnight praise so let me help you God didn't hear what he was saying because he was busy blessing that person so that's the reason why we must understand the power of creation lies in word. Words. Number two. Words are the interface or transport system between the realm of the spirit and the physical. Words are the interface or transport system between the realm of the spirit and the physical. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse 3 that through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. This creation is talking about is not Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 sorry it's not Genesis chapter 1 verse 3 it's what happened before chapter 1 verse 3 the earth God first created the Bible says through faith we understand that 
the world the word worlds is the word ages so it was not just talking about worlds as in the physical creation geographical uh, uh, or biological creation it was talking about different dispensations different timelines of human existence goodness somebody didn't get that so we are living in a generation there is a generation that has existed before us now every generation the bible says through faith we understand that they were all created by the word of god there is a reason why in a, at a particular generation there was industrial revolution there is a reason why at a particular generation there was technological advancement all of that was programmed by the efficacy of god's word the word of god genesis john 1 rather says all things were made by him him speaking of the word of god in verse 3 there and without him was nothing made that was made so what happened from verse 3 was that god was only transporting into the physical what he had created and was a perpetual existence in the realm of the spirit because what tampered with the creation in verse 2 did not tamper with its spiritual originality it only tampered with the physical template of it so what we call creation in our realm physically is transportation from another realm there's nothing god will create everything has been created all he does is by the vehicle of words he transports their reality from that realm the spirit realm into the physical so every time you make a positive confession you are transporting a reality that is already existing the bible says how much more shall he not with him freely with him was speaking about jesus christ who is the word of god how much more shall he not with him freely give us all things in other words the route by which we can receive all things is through the ministry of the word of god you have to say it before it happens so next time you get up in the morning and you are praying for provision your prayer should come with a form of dominion knowing that you are not praying for it to happen it is already created somewhere the person that will bless you tomorrow monday morning march is already somewhere god has designed them before the creation of the world that they will bless you at that so so, so time so what you do by words is that you call a reality that is yet invisible to manifest somebody called me on thursday i missed the call and i didn't call back till like maybe three hours later when i went when i went to the phone to call back i saw a text message he said please sir where is your what is your account number i didn't know that number because the number that called me was different from the number that brought the message just like that and the person told me when i called he said the spirit of god has been ministering to me to send an amount to you what you call creation is only transportation number three and i didn't say that so that you will not sow your seed though you say yeah apostle many people are blessing him so i can delay it's your it's your business if you delay somebody will do it <laughs> say amen yeah. all right I was joking okay you understand number three words words whether thought or spoken words whether thought or spoken are powerful to cause and effect change words whether thought or spoken are powerful to cause and effect change so words carry out their manifestations within the template of two dimensions there are words that are taught there are words that are spoken the words that are taught exist in your imagination they produce a living existence in your imagination that means your thoughts carry life 
Proverbs 23 verse 7 says As he thinketh in his heart So he is If you read the verses before verse 7 And the verses after verse 7 You will see that the thoughts of that man Were pictorial And your imagination is the pictorial expression Of your mind Of your mental faculties So even your thoughts is actually A civilization That's why it's called imagination Imaginations so there are nations in your mind everything that you think is living do you know that you can get so I, i'm actually experiencing this and some of you may have also experienced this a time will come in your work with god where you can so master the realm of the spirit and its operation that your thoughts can create things physically you can think of somebody calling you and the person will call you has it happened to you do you think it was by coincidence even if we don't uh, even if we decide not to talk to ourselves our minds talk with one another at least science has taught us about waves and frequency abi yes that's why as i'm talking to you now the word of god is releasing a spiritual substance into your spirit and as your mind your imagination is tuned to your spirit your mind is creating a pictorial display of what is entering your spirit that's why i can be talking to you now some of you will be seeing a business idea that will launch you into millions i can be talking to you now some of you will begin to have visions about a breakthrough that is coming to you about where god is taking you to so words thought are exist in our imaginations words spoken are our proclamation and both of them carry the power and the ability to cause and effect change so you must not just change what you say you must change what you think first you can't say one thing and think other things otherwise you will be sabotaging what you have said matthew 12 give us matthew 12 let me show you something Matthew 12 verse 33 We're talking about words now that are spoken our proclamation either make the tree good and it's now understand I'm reading from 33 to 37 so that we'll get the context either make the tree good and its fruit good or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad no go back to 33 or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad for a tree is known by its fruit verse 34 brood of vipers who was jesus talking to he was referring to the pharisees to the jews how can you being evil speak good things for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks so when the analogy jesus was given in the previous verse the tree and its fruits was talking about a human being and his words that's why in proverbs chapter 18 the bible says in verse 20 where we read that a man's belly your belly speaks of your being isn't it it speaks of your life your existence shall be as satisfied by the fruit of his mouth the fruit of your mouth is your words hebrews 13 verse 15 says let by him therefore let us offer continually the sacrifices of praise which is the fruit of our lips what is the fruit of your lips your words so when jesus was talking about a bad tree giving back to bad fruit he was saying a human being who speaks negative things and jesus said actually the reason why you will speak negative things is because you are piping from the substance that is in your heart so the first place that change must happen is your mind what do you see now let me tell you something there are two ways of thinking there is productive thinking there is a productive side which is thinking and then there is the non-productive side which is the negative side which is worrying thinking is different from worrying when you think you are producing positive things when you worry you are producing negative things you now see why the attack of the enemy is first on your mind because once your mind is distorted 
at that point even if you say positive things there will be a struggle like you saw at the drama here that was acted isn't it are we together if you have me say amen, amen. you saw that when she started making the positive confessions the bad spirit did not just go he kept trying to secure his dominion around the thought space of that individual but the lady had to keep saying it that's why one con one time confession is not enough you can't just say it on monday morning and you don't say it again till sunday the i am confession some of you need to go go online and print it out and say it every morning and evening after your money devotion that you rush to do at least let's help you let's save you you rush to do the devotion and you know how you used to do it now wake up late and then you are jumping for lectures or for job and you just kneel down beside your big bed and raise your high buttocks and mumble some seven minutes prayer so let's help that prayer life at least make that i am confession before you go out why are you laughing if you are laughing you are part of them are we are we here verse 34 okay 35 now a good man out of the good treasures of his heart brings forth good things and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things 36 but i said to you that for every idle word men may speak they will give account of it ha ah. so you pay now and still pay later After making negative confessions, you pay now by suffering and you still pay on judgment day because God will ask you. After all, most of those confessions, you said it with I am. I am depressed. This life, I don't, I'm not sure I'll make it. The way this country is going, you have to cheat to prosper. I'm not sure I'll ever make it see now it's time to promote me they don't want to promote me that's how they'll do before you know another two years before they'll remember us again or you finish an exam and they come to you what did you write in that number say i wrote so so and say hey you don't fail him. <laughs> ah you write like this you write like this ah oh boy just come back next year come back next year you carry on. and then you go there on your way to prayer ground because i discovered those days when we were in school people used to go and pray after exam not because they wanted to pray but that prayer was like cement say god we don't we messed up just help just cover us and then that's why you see when they go after the prayer after the exam is stronger than the prayer before the exam when you call them to pray before exams will start they will not come after exams everybody's going there And then you go to the exam, you go to the prayer ground. Say, God, not true. I don't fail this thing. But huh. well, this is our lecturer said, now wow. And talk. Well, if I come back next year at least. Not just three carryovers. And then they go for prayers and while they are praying the best is praying but in his mind what he's saying is god all the other exams make sure i don't but this one i know i failed so just help me at least it's only three the bible says every idle word men shall give an account i choose to speak life i choose to declare words of victory i speak life you're gonna live Oh my brother, my sister, I speak life. Don't give up the fight for your life. You shall live in a... Who knows that song? We are going to sing it. Get the person that knows the song. We'll sing it before the message ends. I've chosen to speak life. Listen, some of you, if you have been around me, you will notice that there has never been a situation that made me squeeze my face i'm always smiling people come to me and say apostle there's a problem this this you see me smiling 
Because every problem has an expiry date. The only person that will not expire is me. You shall live and not die. Say after me, I shall not die. But leave to declare the word of the Lord, the works of the Lord in the land of the living. I am a victor. The creator dwells in me. The greater one lives in me. The person and the power of the Holy Ghost dwells in me. Praise God. He can put me over. He can make me a success. I shall not fail. I cannot fail. Because of him. Let that be your confession every day. I remember one time when in 200 level, I traveled for a NIFES program. Victor, you're welcome. Good to see you. And then while we were there, there was this course. The lecturer came and started the lectures and I was not around. So when I came back, it was the second lecture. Or maybe the third, self. And then I came late to his class that day. And when I came, he decided to make mock, of, mock me of me. Now you see, understand that your greatest adversary is the enemy. So he follows you throughout your day, trying to manipulate human beings and situations against you. So when that person says evil towards you or laughs at you, don't see the person. See that loser called the devil behind the person. Because the devil is always trying to fight battles he has already lost. Yeah, you heard what I said, he's a loser. If you see him, tell him I said so, he's a loser. If you see the devil, tell him, I said, call my full name. I said, he's a loser. And so when I was about to enter the man's class, the man said, who are you? Where are you, Where are you entering? I said, I'm a member of this class. The man said, I don't know you. All these people nowadays, huh? the way you look, you look like a Boko Haram member. And then himself and all my classmates were laughing. You would think at that point I felt ashamed. I said, no. In my mind, I just looked at him. I said, because of this, I'm not coming back for your course. And then the man said, enter. I entered. I got a B in that course. Change the reality around your life by the things you say. And by the things you think. The Bible says, he shall keep him in perfect peace whose mind. Stop worrying about things that you cannot solve. Don't you know that your worries of tomorrow robs you of your joy of today? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, in verse 34, it says, sufficient for the day is the trouble thereof. Meaning that you already have enough problem worrying about this day. So it, God now trying to help you so that you will not even worry at all. He says in 1 Peter chapter 5, casting all your cares on him. The word care is the word worry here. So even the today you should worry about, God says, cast it on me. Let me worry for you. You think God doesn't worry for you? The Bible says, for I know the thoughts that I have. Excuse me, is, that, is, not, is it not your thoughts that your worries reside? So God says, stop worrying. Allow me to worry for you. Ah, you didn't get what I said. We are always victorious. Say amen. amen. Where are we now? Number what? Mm -mm. Number four. Number four now. Words are the basis for faith. Words are the basis for faith. Words are the basis for faith. Now let's connect words and faith. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 10. It says, if thou shalt confess the Lord in your heart, the Lord Jesus, and believe with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, what will happen? You will be saved. Verse 10 says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In verse 6 of the same Romans 10, the Bible says that there, our righteousness, which is of faith, speaks. So the greatest character of faith is that it speaks 
2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13 says for we have the same spirit of faith as it is written I believed therefore I spoke we also believe and therefore we speak verse 14 says knowing this so this knowledge is what supplies the action of faith in verse 13 it says knowing this that he who raised up the Lord Jesus from the dead shall also raise us up so the greatest expression of faith is that it is vocal it speaks therefore faith or words are the basis for what faith so we can tell if you have faith by the things you say because that faith is based on the knowledge you have that is settled in you as a conviction as a conviction you remember our teaching last week listen to this every attack against us is an attack on our faith which is an attempt by the enemy to make us compromise or alter the fashion of our words every attack against us is an attack on our faith so when you fall sick it was not your body the enemy was attacking it was your faith he was attacking because your faith becomes the instrument it becomes uh, the platform upon which everything that you were saved to receive in grace is given to you it says by grace you have been saved through what faith and that not of yourself that faith he said not of yourself but it's the gift of god so faith is the platform for which we receive everything that we have in christ now every attack against you is actually an attack targeted towards your faith are we together and the plan of the enemy for such attacks is to ensure that he gets you in a position where you compromise and what's the compromise the compromise is that you begin to change the fashion of your words because you by reason of what you know and what you believe have the ability to fashion the words that can bring about your salvation or your destruction that's why it says no weapon formed against us shall prosper you think the weapon is knife cutlass gpmgs rpgs no the weapon is the next sentence in that verse 17 of isaiah 54 every tongue that rises excuse me what do tongues do speak so the weapon formed against you is the words that tongues have spoken against you Let me show you there are two dimensions of warfare i said it's the war of words isn't it there are two dimensions of warfare that we all face i'm, I'm writing a book now and it's on i've not gotten the name i will look for the name very soon god will help me but it's on god was just trying to show me um uh, um two dimensional battlefields that every believer on earth must stand in for the conquest of victory there are two major battlefields for every believer i won't take you into it because of the mess the, the lesson today so there are two dimensions of warfare that we face having understood that the enemy's trick is that he can get you to a point where you begin to compromise and say the wrong things because when you say the wrong things you are giving the enemy license to attack you we now realize that there are two he attacks on two grounds first of all the first one is internal is that he manipulates the individual most times through the five senses of that individual to perceive the wrong things to perceive the wrong situation and then by his own mouth declare his domination by the things he says that dimension of warfare is internal that one now you cause yourself it's like a knife that you should use to cut an orange and you use that knife to cut yourself so our knife you know our words just like your knife that you used to cut your orange our words are supposed to cut through the situations of life but instead of we using it to cut the situations of life so that we can walk through triumphantly and in victory we use those knives to cut ourselves 
That's internal. Isn't it? Let me show you external. External is in two phases. Either the enemy gets people around you who are always you know, making negative confessions, saying the wrong things. Or some of you came from families where right from small there was this one thing about you that everybody loved to laugh at, to mock at. Some of you, they always yab you at home. And then when you became born again, they started making caricature of your faith. Some of you have siblings and with all respect to them, some of you even parents that they don't say anything good about you. And please, if you are a parent here, make sure you change the state of your words to your people, to your children. The Bible says we should correct in love, not in anger. Isn't it? It's not out of anger you now open your mouth and say, Stupid boy. Useless girl. And now the person is 18 years. And she has gotten pregnant. And you are crying. What, what did you do to the devil? You were the one who did that. That's the first phase of the external warfare. The second phase is where Satan comes in himself. At this stage... Satan is known as our adversary who is an accuser of the brethren. I'm trying to be very simple so that we can understand everything. At this external phase of the, of the warfare, Satan becomes our accuser. Now, what does it mean to accuse? To accuse means to make written and verbal petitions against a party or an individual seeking to obtain the hand of justice against that individual so satan the bible calls him the accuser of the brethren give us zechariah chapter 3 verse 1 to 3 let me give you an instance where satan practiced this kind of warfare an accuser always making verbal and written petitions against us now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. The word angel is with a capital letter A. I would have explained what it meant, but I don't have time. Verse 2. No, go, go to verse 1. Verse, okay, verse 1. Verse 1, 2, and 3. Then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. Now, Satan, the word oppose there is the word accuse. Why was Satan accusing Joshua? We read in verse 3 that Joshua was clothed with filthy garments. So Satan had a reason because of the sin of Israel. Now you must understand that this vision was seen in the heavens. So Joshua who appeared before the angel of the Lord was the representative of the nation of Israel because in the order of the practices in the tabernacle the high priest was supposed to go once into the most holy place and stand to intercede for himself and for the people of israel so zechariah was caught in the spirit and he saw the heavenly reality of this earthly function and in the realm of the spirit in heaven joshua was clothed with filthy garments meaning that israel had sinned so satan had a right to accuse Joshua verse 2 and the Lord said to Satan the Lord rebuke you Satan the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you he said is this not a brand plucked from the fire in other words the fire there spoke about afflictions persecutions trials that Joshua had gone through recently and the angel was saying that because of that, he had paid the price. He had passed a test and is worthy of promotion before me. So this accusation you are bringing is wrong. Now, my main, my main emphasis was in verse 1 where Satan was accusing. So Satan uses the weapon of accusation over and over again to get God's people. If he cannot get you by your words to bring condemnation on yourself, he will use the weapon of accusation. And he uses it on all of us on almost a daily basis. He does it through guilt. 
that thought that makes you feel guilty and that's why you cannot pray that's accusation going on already that's a battle because Satan begins to bring thoughts to your mind that you just said this yesterday or you did this in the morning why are you praying now or you just got angry before and sometimes he can even quote scriptures that's why if you don't know the word of God very well you will not know whose voice is speaking in your thoughts because Satan being a deceiver he will use the voice of your thoughts to speak to you so that you think you are talking to yourself and then you are forced on the strength of what you are hearing in your mind to begin to make wrong confessions about yourself I hope you are following me So in this stage of the warfare, Satan is our adversary and is known as the accuser. But there is good news to it. Jesus is known as our advocate. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 2 verse 1, He said, these things I write to you, dear children, that you sin not. He said, but in case you sin, if you sin, He said, we have an advocate. Ah! Give it to us. Let's see it. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, just in case you now sin, there is already a backup plan made for your atonement. He said, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Satan has been cast down. So even him, he doesn't have a legal right to stand in the presence of God. But in the presence of God, Jesus is the only one known as Jesus the righteous. So he has a proper stance before God to plead or to atone for your sin. But many of us fall victim of that trap of, of Satan being our accuser. And so on the strength of the, those thoughts of guilt and condemnation that comes to you, you refuse not to pray that moment. And you think by staying alone you can settle guilt. Let me teach you something, children of God. Shying away from the presence of God or from the presence of God's people can never take away guilt. It can never bring recovery from sin. That is the time where you must go before the Father the most. I'm very quick to pray when I offend God or when I do something wrong. You know why? You need to understand the relationship we have with him. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died. If he died while I was yet a sinner, it's not now that I've been called righteous that he will deny me. No. So yes, I misbehaved. Satan, it's not your business. It's an in-house matter. Stay out of it. Let me settle with God. And some of you think, you can pray all kinds of prayer in the Holy Ghost. The only prayer you cannot pray in the Holy Ghost is confession of sin. Not lie. You can pray. The Bible says praying with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. You can pray in tongues and you are confessing your sin. Satan doesn't know. And then you and God settle the thing and he doesn't know you have settled it. Then he comes again and he's, he's showing you picture. He says, ah, your own news is too late. You are not current, Satan. You didn't know when I was settling it. Are we catching something this night? You need this. If you, are, if you are calling to the ministry of deliverance, you need this understanding. Because some spirits, if you engage deliverance with people, especially if, there are, if they are believers. This is not part of my message, but let me say this. I've said it before that believers cannot be possessed, but they can be oppressed. And by reason of their confessions or by reason of their thoughts, they can allow a space for demons to come into their life. But as for being possessed, they cannot be possessed because possession now means that the spirit has total dominion on that, on that individual. And the spirit cannot have dominion when the Holy Spirit is still in that person. Because the Bible says we have been saved and sealed off by the Holy Spirit who is our guarantee, the guarantee of our redemption. So, when, you know, sometimes when you pray for people to get delivered and the spirits are not coming out, it may be because Satan is using this side of the warfare, accusation. So you need this understanding to deal with the spirit before getting the person free. If you heard that, say amen. So Satan is our is the accuser jesus is the, our advocate god 
is the righteous judge. And the Bible says in Luke chapter 18, it says, Shall not God, shall not God, the righteous judge, avenge his elect, speaking of believers, that cry unto him day and night. So in that battle, you are already victorious because both your advocate, your lawyer, and the judge are standing in for you. Have you ever seen a court session where the judge is supporting the defendant? There's no need to even... The person who paid the, the prosecution witness has wasted his money. Because no matter how you argue that case, the judge is ready to discharge and acquit that person. Now, discharge and acquitted is two things in one. You can be discharged as a believer and not acquitted. How do I know? Or how do I mean? Now, I'm, I'm doing a lot of digress, which is not part of my message, but I'm doing this so that I can help some people. If any man be in Christ is a new creature, that's good. That's true. All things are passed away. But then you still have some legal and biological connections to your family, to your father or your mother. So on the strength of that connection because it happened on that marriage that is a divine institution on the strength of that satan can still offset your life by initiating what we call family or generational curses have you heard of that yes, now watch this so the person has given his life to christ he has been discharged but he's not yet acquitted because there are still some legal grounds by which the enemy is fighting that person so that person now needs the enforcement of prayer which brings about a decree of that which the word has said so that on the strength of that prayer every ground that the enemy is holding that person on is broken loose because even when the judge rules in your favor sometimes the prosecution will not want to release the land back to you they need to give you police they will, now do, they will give you what they call a police report, isn't it? As an enforcement agency, so that that person stay off. That's why we pray deliverance prayers when we come into Christ. Huh? So that we can be discharged and acquitted. When Lazarus was buried, Jesus stood in front of that tomb. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible says, he that was dead came forth, but he was still bound in clothes. If Jesus had left him like that, he would still not be able to move. He can move, but he will move very slow. What did Jesus say? Lose him and let him go. Did you catch what I said? Don't worry. Listen to the tape. You'll get it. Even if you don't get it, you get it. That's why when you come into Christ, don't just say, all oh, things are new. There's no need to pray. Now, lie you. you need to enforce your freedom. Because Satan is an illegal personality. I hope you know. His existence now is illegality in itself. So he knows you are free, but he will do everything to tamper on your right. That's why he brings the weapon of accusation, of guilt, makes you feel guilty, accuse you, and then you begin to blame yourself for the things he has done. So Satan causes havoc in your life, and then he gives you the credit. It's like monkey they walk, babu they chop. But the Bible says there is never now no condemnation to those who are Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For the law of life which is in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin. Brothers and sisters, this is the knowledge that makes me powerful. That is why there is no demonic case I face. That the spirit will not go. Because I, I know my right. I understand everything. And those of you who have been around me during deliverances, I, I seldom allow the spirits to talk. Because I have more knowledge than them. Hallelujah. Now let's close. Finally, number what? The fight of faith is a war of words. I haven't understood all the four points I've given you. We can draw this conclusion 
that since faith or words are the basis for faith the fight of faith is a war of words it's a warfare of words positive confessions from the word of God against negative accusations from the enemy 1st John chapter 5 verse 4 says that whatever is born of God overcomes the world and this is the victory of them that overcomes even our faith so how is our victory in faith exercised since we know that the war of words is the fight of faith Hebrews 10 last scripture and then we'll pray Hebrews 10 verse 35 to 39 let me show you something this is how we secure the victory of faith cast not away therefore your confidence which had great recompense of reward for ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God ye might receive the promise now give us verse 23 first of this same chapter let me show you something the Bible says we should cast not our confidence it says let us hold fast the profession to profess means to speak isn't it and I taught you that the greatest character of our faith is that it speaks the Bible says that we should hold fast in other words we should be consistent in our confession of faith without wavering for he is faithful that promise now give us verse 35 again on the strength of that understanding let's read verse 35 give us a new King James please why must we hold on to our confession knowing fully well that our confession is the expression of the victory of our faith the Bible says therefore do not cast away your confidence which has great reward go on by reading to verse 39 for you have need of endurance so that after you have done the will of God you may receive the promise the endurance there speaks about your continuous confession of the word of God of what God has said concerning you the Bible says you must not cast it away you must put it ever on your lips he said let this book of the Lord not depart out of your mouth meaning you must keep saying it you must keep confessing it that is how you secure your victory by faith for you have need of endurance so that after you have done the will of God you may receive the promise verse 37 for yet a little while and he who is coming will come and will not tarry 38 now the just shall live by word and we know that words are the basis for faith so we can in, we can interpret that to mean that the just shall live by what the confessions of his mouth and the bible says that action that activity you must not throw it away it says but if anyone draws back let me explain what drawing back is before we pray every time god has made a promise to you and it looks like it's not being fulfilled or anytime in your walk with God listen carefully because this will deliver some people anytime in your walk with God offenses come you know Jesus said offenses will come offenses come and because of that you become discouraged and the enemy gives you a wrong perception about faith about God about people you notice that you begin to give in to despair despair is what the bible calls drawback you are no longer interested in your quiet time with god or you are no longer interested in coming into the fellowship of god's people or you are no longer interested in your service in the house of god the bible calls that a, a, a an action drawing back and god said if anyone engages this he said my soul has no pleasure i don't know about you but if this happens to you the presence of god has been isolated from your life and we have to be careful that's why jesus taught us to forgive simon he said how many times should i forgive my brother 70 times thinking he had tried jesus in a lie. part day 70 times 7 
In other words, I want you to have a bag of forgiveness waiting. Because it's not just about your brother offending you. It's about the effect of that offense. The Bible says it will bring you to a point where you have a wrong perception about everything. And you begin to draw back. It says if anyone draws back, my soul. And in church today we have many people who are drawing back. We have many people who by reason of one thing or the other are no longer interested in the things of God. They are no longer interested in the house of God coming to fellowship with God's people. I think it's the same chapter here that says that we should not forsake the gathering of the saints. Verse 24. All of that is a manipulation from the devil. There are many people in church that have lived for five years with one offense one offense planted in their heart for five years they are no longer interested in doing anything in church if you are like that i came i brought the love of god to you tonight for your healing because the bible says when you do that thing you are drawing back and when you draw back god takes away his pleasure when the bible says my soul had no pleasure the word pleasure is the word delight when God delights in a man, you will know by reason of the ever-present presence of the Lord around that man. It's a dangerous state to live in. I hope you understand what I just said. It's a dangerous state to live in. It's a very dangerous state. As a man of God, somebody offends me and I come with that anger to preach. The Bible says I'm drawing back. Now, I can still master the art of preaching. And the people will be blessed, not really because of my preaching, but because God cannot gather his people in vain. But gradually, the presence of God is retreating from my life. And is reducing me to a stage actor. By the time the presence of God has retreated completely, like Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel, where the glory of God left gradually till he left the temple, you become exposed. And at that time, anything can happen one attack can strike you down forever at that in fact that is that is the mystery behind delay are we together i know some of us may not like but i'm, I'm bringing deliverance to you with this that is the mystery behind delay that's why if you have a prophetic word on your life or you have done something that has activated a season for you you have to be careful it's like a pregnant woman when you are pregnant at the first trimester there are things you can do that will not affect the pregnancy but when you begin to enter the second and the third trimester you have to be very careful otherwise mechanical disadvantages can abort that pregnancy and there are many people that has aborted their prophecies they have aborted the blessings of god over their life the promise of god over their life by wrong and negative confessions by allowing guilt to take hold of their mind by entertaining offense in their heart the bible says if anyone draws back give me that scripture that's the scripture the holy spirit is emphasizing on my on my heart this evening verse 38 media but if anyone draws back my soul next verse he said, but we are not of those who draw back. Hallelujah. We are not of those who draw back to perdition. Judas was the man described as the man of perdition. Why? Can I tell you why I think Judas sold Jesus? The Bible did not say Judas will sell Jesus. The Bible just said, woe unto the man by whom the son of man will be betrayed. But as I study the scriptures, I could put one plus two together and realize why. Judas was actually from the tribe of Judah. He was called Judas Iscariot. The word Iscariot is actually Keriot. Keriot was a town, one of the villages in the, the city of Judah. And surprisingly, being someone from the tribe of Judah, he was related to Jesus. He was peradventure the closest relation to Jesus among the disciples. 
So you can imagine that they grew up together. They learned everything together. He knew Jesus. I mean, this is the son of Joseph the carpenter. So when Jesus started out ministry as the Messiah, Judas had a hard time seeing the deity and the divine side of Jesus. He was used to the human side. Watch this. That was why even though, and you know, Jesus, maybe out of respect, I don't know, but I think Jesus knew he would betray him. But maybe out of respect, Jesus inaugurated him as the, the treasurer. So Judas felt he was occupying a major position. And because of that, on the strength of that position and on the strength of his attachment to Jesus, he could call the shots. He could say something. You know, we have some people like that in church, sir. Maybe because they bought the plastic chairs in church. Or because they're the oldest elders in church. Or because they're the ones that contributed to buy the pastor car. They can say anything anyhow against the pastor. <laughs> it's a last day spirit. Run away from it. That was why when that lady poured that oil on Jesus, nobody spoke. The only person that spoke was Judas. And to show you his disrespect for Jesus, he spoke it out. He said, why is this wasted? We would have sold this thing and give the money to the poor. In other words, he was calling Jesus a waste. That they pour this oil on you. You, you, are not, you are not deserving of it. Rather, they should sell it and give me so that I can steal from it. You didn't understand what I said. That was why Judas betrayed Jesus easily. And the Bible called him the son of perdition. The Bible says, when we draw back, we have given to perdition. Perdition means an unrepentant state. It's not part of the message, but we have to say this now because it's a spirit at work in the last days among children of God who don't know that this is an activity of the enemy to disrupt their fellowship from God, disrupt their fellowship with the brethren, and cut off their salvation. He said, but we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving. And with the mouth, confession is made unto what? Salvation. So he said, cast not your confession. You want to see the hand of God at work in your life? You want to see everything that God has promised come to pass? Ensure that your faith is vocal. A victorious faith is a vocal faith. You keep saying it whether situations are good or bad. You don't say what is happening around you. You don't allow your five senses to rule your existence. Like those five kings that Joshua told his captains, put your leg on their neck. So also, there are five kings ruling many people. Those five kings are your five senses. What you see, what you hear. Some people developed high blood pressure after the attack on Tuesday. Even though their houses were far away from the, the, the location of the attack. You are laughing. Some of you, if we check you here now, it's there. They were not attacked. But because they were, they had. What do you hear? What do you see? What do you taste? What do you feel? Many of us are victims of our feelings. I don't feel, I don't feel, I don't feel like to pray. Are you kidding me? Pray until you feel like to pray, then you start praying. Pray till the feeling comes. Then use the feeling to start praying. The Bible says we walk by faith, not by sight. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It doesn't deny that it's a valley. But just to make mockery of the enemy, he calls it a valley of the shadow. Not even death. Shadow. Even if it was death, the Bible says God quickens the dead. He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I be afraid of? When the enemies came up against me to eat of my flesh, even my foes, they stumbled and fell. Though a host encamp around me, 
yet will I not be afraid. He said, though war rises against me, yet in the midst of that war, I'll be confident. When you walk through life with this understanding, you walk tall in the midst of circumstances. Even if everybody gang up against you, realize that one with God is majority. The Bible says, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be? Not a lecturer, not a soldier, not a robber, not a troublesome colleague in your place of work. Not a witch of, of a business associate. Not a neighbor. Nothing human or spiritual. Nothing human or spiritual. This night we'll pray two prayer points. The first prayer point is that we are going to ask the Lord. No, you will not ask the Lord. It's you that said it. Every negative confession you have made with your mouth that has brought upon you what you are going through, whether you are aware of it or not, in the name of Jesus, open your mouth and cancel it. Lift your voice and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Every negative word spoken, every negative confession, The Bible says, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth. Lord, every negative occurrence in my life, in my family, that is as a result of what I have said before now, I cancel it, I cancel it, I cancel it, I cancel it. Come on, somebody pray. Number two, every evil word, incantation, enchantment, everything evil that has been spoken against my life, whether in secret or in open, whether by a man or by a spirit, we are now those activities. And we declare the judgment of God over those individuals. Open your mouth and pray. Yes. Yes. The Bible says, Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither any divination against Israel. Every evil word spoken against you. By man or by spirit. We bring to condemnation those words. We bring to condemnation those individuals. We declare a heavy deployment of the power of God to undo the machinations of darkness, undo the works of the, of the enemy. I shall not die, but live, but declare the works of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Somebody. Come on, pray. Undo every form of witchcraft, every incantation, every enchantment, every word of sorcery, every word of a soothsayer, every evil utterance spoken. For a 
demonstrated the, the, the device of the graffiti so that the hands cannot perform their enterprise. You don't have to worry And don't you be afraid Joy comes in the morning While I make an altar call for those who need to be saved, for those who need to make Jesus the Lord of their life, or those who were once born again, but because of depression or the problems of life, you backslidden. While I make an altar call for you to come to the front and I lead you again. 
I want everybody to know that what you just sang is a prophecy, not just a song. The Bible says in John 14, Because I live, you shall live also. The devil has spoken. People have spoken. Situations have spoken. Your grades on the board have spoken. Your friends may have spoken. Lecturers who don't understand the word of God may have spoken. Life is speaking all forms of negativity around you. But with Jesus, you will stand. All that God has said concerning you will come to pass. And you will live to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Please, if you are here, you know you need to make Jesus the Lord of your life. While all eyes are closed and all hands are down, I want you to walk to the front very quickly. Let's do this before we close. If you know you are here, you need to make Jesus the Lord of your life. You need to be born again. You need to say yes to him. All that has been said tonight, you are not part of it because you are not yet a believer. You have not surrendered to the life of Jesus. You have not made that confession that determines your salvation. I want you to walk to the front while all eyes are closed quickly. And then we'll just get you restored. While the rest of us are praying quietly as we stand. All right. When peace like a river attend and just close your eyes and be still. Allow me to sing. When sorrows like seas belongs whatever my love thou hast assured me to sing. I want you to focus on every situation that has been a threat in your life. While I see this song, sing this song. See the mountains being removed. See the storm being stilled. See those situations and the enemy rolled away. When peace like a river attended my river. When sorrows like seas Pillows oh, 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 oh. Whatever my heart Thou hast assured me to say It is well It is well With my soul to your life and prophesying it is well it is well with your soul with your soul it is well it is well with your soul it is well it is well with your soul Put your hands together and give him praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 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 All right, I'll do this very quickly. Please, while we stand, let me just lead them um, to make the sinner's prayer. And then immediately after that, we'll welcome the first timers. Amen. How many of you believe by just this short song? A lot of things have happened in your life. I didn't just sing. I was prophesying over you. Please stretch your hands towards them. You in front. Whatever has happened, God gives you the opportunity of a new beginning. And I want you to say these words from your heart. Say after me. Say, Lord Jesus, 
I come to you. I acknowledge my sin. I acknowledge my fault. But I receive today eternal life. I thank you because you died for my sin. And therefore, I declare that I'm born again in Jesus' name. Father, we seal them with victory. We seal them by your spirit and we decree and declare that from today forward ever and backward never. From today they have victory over sin, over Satan, over fear and over death. Their lives will go from glory to glory in Jesus name. And amen. Can we celebrate God for them?